begun. We all know that Duke Nukem 3D is easily one of the greatest shooters ever made. It is still fun to play even to this day. However, what if I told you that there is a mod of Duke Nukem 3D available that mixes a lot of beta elements from the game and mixes them into an amazing and definitive smoothie that is even better than the original version? You what? The mod I'm talking about is none other than Duke Nukem 3D Legacy Edition. This mod was created by the man himself, Marcos, and released on November 3rd, 2022. Today, we're gonna talk about why this mod is, in my honest opinion, the definitive way to play Duke Nukem 3D today. So, without any further ado, let's find out. What makes this mod so special is that, like I said, it mixes a lot of beta elements from the prototypes to enhance the original game, most notably the weapons and the enemy roster. However, the mod goes an extra mile by actually rebalancing the game as a whole, making it more difficult, but I'll get to that later. First off, let's talk about the weapons themselves. The pistol got nerfed in this mod, as it is no longer automatic. What made the original pistol so effective is that it was perfect against lower tier enemies, because it shot bullets automatically, meaning that you didn't need to constantly mash the fire button to shoot enemies. In this mod, since the pistol is no longer automatic, you have to keep mashing the fire button, which is kinda annoying. With that being said, it does have great points. For instance, it's very precise at long range, very useful at sniping enemies at long range, and it's actually more useful on the higher difficulties, as you need to use this weapon in order to conserve ammo for other guns. It also has an alternative firing mode, which basically shoots bullets in bursts. Great at very short range against low tier enemies, but very imprecise. Next up, we have the shotguns. We have the beta shotgun, which acts more of a regular shotgun. It's weak, but it gets the job done. Then, we have the double shotgun, which is a more powerful version of the regular shotgun. It's less precise, but it packs a lot of punch, since it can one-shot a pickup. Its alternative firing mode can save your ass in tight situations, since it shoots twice, which can turn the tides of a battle at the cost of more ammo. While the chain gun remains unchanged apart from its firing speed, the plasma rifle makes an appearance in this mod. The weapon shoots a spread of plasma balls that can be deadly. Its alternative firing mode is actually pretty interesting. It fires a big bullet of plasma to stun an enemy for a brief moment, useful to escape sticky situations. The rocket launcher got a major revamp in this mod, as its missiles are very fast but they have a drop velocity which can be a liability against long-range enemies, and they do not deal splash damage and is great against octobrains and other enemies. The Ultra RPG is much more effective and risky considering that it fires missiles with a big splash damage, so be careful when using it. Despite the Pipe Bomb, Shrinker and the Devastator being unchanged in this mod, the Expander now fires a regular projectile just like the Shrinker, but this time around, it expands the enemies and they go BOOM! Just like in the 1995 beta build of the game. The flamethrower can cook enemies into a beef wellington, but be careful not to burn yourself or else you will turn yourself into a frying human omelette, and the aliens love to eat human omelettes. Its alternative fire mode fires a napalm projectile that spreads around the field. Overall, I really like the weapon roster in this mod. It's really different from the vanilla version of Duke Nukem 3D. I really like the plasma rifle and the flamethrower, two very excellent weapons that are a force to be reckoned with. Sure, the pistol got nerfed, but it's still useful, especially on the higher difficulties where you need to use it in order to conserve ammo for other weapons. Uh, hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video for you, but I just let you know that there's a new version of this mod that actually adds some new things, most notably a level select feature as well as the ability to use automatic pistol if you wish to do so. Which is very cool and I appreciate the creator updating and adding new things to the mod. And also, the remaining footage of this video is from the 1.2 version of this mod right now. So, there's that I guess. Now back to the review. As for the enemy roster, there are new kids on the block, like the new variations of the Enforcer. Some Enforcers have flamethrowers, others have chain guns, and in some cases, there are Enforcers that pack plasma rifles, they can paralyze you. The same can be said about the Pig Cop. 
Some pickups carry a regular shotgun, others carry a double shotgun. In episode 3, there is a big pickup that is even more dangerous. The assault troopers from the prototypes do make a return and they are much more powerful than the regular assault troopers. The snakeheads, lame duke drones and even the organic turrets make an appearance as well, which is really awesome. Although most of the bosses in this mod remain unaltered for the most part. The only boss that got my jaw dropped was none other than the Emperor himself, Cycloid Emperor. In the original version of the game, the Cycloid was unfortunately really bad, as it was a joke. Sure, its design looks cool and all, but battle-wise he's an ammo fodder, and useless and dodging his missiles is easy peasy. It was disappointing in the original game since you'd think that the boss would give you a lot of trouble. Because, you know, he's the freaking emperor of all aliens. He's supposed to be the strongest enemy in the game. However, the mod totally revamps the cycloid as a whole and boy this was big because the author turned it from useless garbage to an absolute prestigious monster. The boss fight has three phases. The Emperor is protected by three late Duke Octobrains and you need to focus on them first and then fight the Emperor. Then the stadium gets shorter and you need to use your 4000 years of build engine skills to its maximum power to defeat him. In the third phase he will not hold back and will go ape shit by spamming napalm projectiles on you. You better have your FPS skills razor sharp in this part or else one mistake and you're toast. This fight was easily one of the most intense boss fights in any build edging game history. I died a lot, but it was very fun to fight against him, as it offered me a huge challenge. After all, he's the final boss of the game. But man, it feels so rewarding after you beat him. Such a delightful boss fight, that's for sure. And even talking about it isn't enough. You need to try it to believe. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Speaking of difficulty, Legacy Edition makes a lot of adjustments in terms of difficulty and in a great way. One of my complaints in the original game was that it was too easy for build engine game standards. Too easy even on the harder skills. I mean, even a donkey can steamroll this game with ease. Thankfully, the mod makes the game much, much harder, but not to the point that it's unbeatable. The difficulty skills have been revamped. For instance, on Come Get Some, you take twice the damage making the enemies much more threatening than ever before. The Damn I'm Good difficulty got some adjustments. The respawn mechanic was removed and if I'm being honest, this was for the best, since the respawn enemy mechanic in the original Damn I'm Good was one of the dumbest mechanics ever since it artificially raised the difficulty of the game, and in a bad way at that. The respawning mechanic was absent from other build engine games onwards, since 3D Realms knew that this mechanic was dumb. After all, they didn't add it in Shadow Warrior. Instead, you take 3 times the damage from enemies, and that's a big game changer, since you need to play much safer than in the previous difficulty skills, as a lot of enemies, like the pickups, battle lords, and even the robotic assault troopers, could pulverize you in a blink of an eye. Luckily, this is where the extra lives can help you in your quest. You will need them if you want to succeed on the higher difficulty levels, especially in some levels. It gets really brutal if you don't have any extra lives, as like I said, the enemies on Damn I'm Good mode are really dangerous and they are not pushovers by any means. This means that if you die to them, it's probably your fault, as you need to play safe, explore every nook and cranny of every level. It's not that hard to do if you play the original game many times and know every secret in the game. Another thing that Damn I'm Good offers is that after you beat a level, you lose all your ammo on all the weapons. You don't lose your weapons, but you lose their ammo and you start with a pistol with 48 bullets. Sometimes they will give you a portable medkit or even an atomic health to make things easier. Also, if you beat a secret level, your weapons ammo will not be removed when moving to a regular level, which is an interesting change, because it makes the secret levels worth it to explore Granted, some of the levels are okay, but the fact that you can still have your ammo after beating a secret level is a game changer and a good one at that. For me, I really love the challenge that this mod offered. It really made Duke Nukem 3D even more fun to play, and while I have no love lost for the original version that I and many others grew up with, it lacked the difficulty that other games like Shadow Warrior and Blood had. At the end of the day, who doesn't like to play an enhanced version of an already beloved game like Duke Nukem 3D? The soundtrack of the mod is a banger, 
It has a lot of music from Duke Nukem Total Meltdown, as well as some music from the 95 betas like Dark Matter and It's Green from Lee Jackson. And what makes this soundtrack even more excellent is that when you're facing the bosses, the music changes which positively affects the experience of the game. So what about my overall thoughts about this mod? Well, it's no doubt one of the best Duke Nukem 3D mods ever made, as it mixes a lot of elements from the beta versions of the game and blends them into an excellent smoothie filled to the brim with excitement and then some. And I dare to say that this mod is the definitive way to play Duke Nukem 3D. All things considered, the mod is legendary just like the man himself, Duke Nukem. And we hope we can see more of this mod in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for more content. I want to know what you think about the legacy edition of Duke Nukem 3D. Did you like it or did you not like it? Do you think it's better than the original version of the game? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. And that's all folks, see you next time.